Hi there, my name is Matti Sulanto and this time I'm gonna take a look at this brand new Sigma 35mm f1.2 lens for the L mount. But for the most part what I'm going to say applies also to the Sony E mount version which is optically identical with this one. But before I talk more about the lens, please consider subscribing to my channel and tap the bell right there so you'll get notified whenever I post a new video. And I usually post a new video two times a week on Tuesdays and on Fridays. This lens is not mine, it's on loan from Foca. They import Sigma lenses to Finland. However, I'm not getting paid to make this video. I make this video and all my videos only so I can share my experiences with you guys. I remember it really well when the very first Sigma Art Series lens came out in 2012. That's seven years ago, time really flies. And that was also a 35mm lens. Only it was a DSLR lens and uh, the maximum aperture was f1.4. But it was an awesome lens and it beat pretty much all other 35mm lenses on the market in sharpness. And I had a pleasure to review it back then when it was a brand new lens. Here are some pictures that I shot on that lens back then when I was reviewing it. And this is Sigma's latest 35mm full frame art lens. But this has almost nothing in common with the original 35mm art lens, except the focal length and the fact that this is a camera lens. Let me explain. This lens is a native mirrorless design. And as far as I can understand, this could never be made to work on any DSLR simply because the rear element is so close to the mount that it's just simply impossible. So DSLR users are left without this delicacy. This lens also has a faster maximum aperture of f1.2 instead of the 1.4 of the original lens. The original Sigma 35mm art was a really fine lens, both optically and mechanically. But this new lens is on another level altogether. Back then we didn't have 50 or 60 megapixel full frame cameras and we didn't have a full frame mirrorless camera at all. The first one, the Sony A7 came the next year in 2013. So I think it was about time to have another modern version of the Sigma 35mm art lens. And now let's finally check out this lens and start with the mechanical design. This lens simply oozes quality and premium feel. The exterior materials are metal and some sort of composite. The wide manual focus ring is uh, smooth and has a really really nice uh, feel to it and it makes manual focusing easy if you want to focus manually. The aperture ring as well is uh, quite wide and it makes it easy to operate even with gloves and the gloves season is coming fast at least here in Finland. There's also a switch on the side of the lens to de-click the aperture ring. Normally it clicks at one third of a stop uh, steps but if you de-click it you can adjust the aperture at one eighth of a stop increments. There is also a programmable button on the side of the lens and the manual uh, autofocus manual focus switch. And of course this comes with a hood. And the filter thread is whopping 82 millimeters. 
and this weighs in at about 1140 grams. So this is also quite heavy lens and as you can see also quite large. And of course a big lens needs something big to mount it on to make a balanced combination. And here I think the S1 or S1R that I'm using is a really good match. The Sigma mounted on the S1R feels reasonably balanced and the camera offers me enough contact surface and a large grip uh, that allows me to hold this combination comfortably even uh, with one hand. But it's only natural to support the lens uh, with my left hand when I'm actually shooting. So this is a large and heavy combination but it's still reasonably comfortable to hold and use. But this is not your average casual photo walk kit, of course. This is for something where you absolutely need or want the special, some of the special qualities that the lens or the camera or both can deliver. And for something like that, I would not hesitate to take this combination with me because the results are absolutely stunning. But before I tell more about the sharpness and all that, let's check out the optical design because that's also quite impressive. First of all, this lens is the very first Sigma wide-angle lens with a maximum aperture of f1.2. And this is, like I said at the very beginning, this is available for both the L-mount and the Sony E-mount. And the optical construction is 17 elements in 12 groups and that includes three SLD elements and three aspherical elements. And one of the aspherical elements is double-sided. So Sigma really put a lot of effort into this lens to make the optical performance as good as possible. And the aperture has 11 rounded blades to create that buttery smooth bokeh. There's no image stabilizer in this lens and I think the reason for that is that it would make the lens even bigger and optically more complex than it already is. But at least with the Lumix cameras the lack of stabilizer is not a problem because the IBIS in uh, S-series cameras is really really effective. The minimum focusing distance is 30 centimeters, which is nothing special. It's quite normal for a 35 millimeter wide angle, full frame wide angle lens. And uh, according to Sigma, this lens has a dust and splash proof structure. I'm sure you are very interested in how the autofocus performance is, especially with Lumix cameras. And it's a bit of a mixed bag. The single autofocus is reasonably fast and also very reliable. But the continuous autofocus, mm, it's a bit different story. Panasonic's DFD system requires a lens that can move the focus back and forth really, really fast. Panasonic's own lenses can do it 480 times per second. And it, at least it feels like the Sigma can't do quite the same. So the continuous autofocus is uh, not that confidence inspiring and uh, the back and forth uh, movement, the focus movement is uh, much more pronounced than with the uh, Lumix lenses. Unfortunately, I don't have an external recorder, so I can't show it to you properly. So you just have to take my word for it. I don't think it's a major downside or a deal breaker with a wide angle lens like this. And I personally very seldom use continuous autofocus, but it's still something to think about if you are planning on buying this lens. And if you like to focus manually, it's also a pleasure because of the generous uh, focusing ring and a beautiful viewfinder on the S1R. 
You can also change the focus throw or the movement in the menu. You can choose between 90 and 360 degrees. And then the best bit, the optical performance, which is stunning. This lens is really, really sharp, even wide open. But of course it gets even better when stopping down and by about f4 this is super sharp from corner to corner. But it's that wide open performance that makes this lens really attractive because you can really use that widest aperture f1.2 and get that wide angle of view combined with uh, extremely shallow depth of field. And that's very nice look and also very difficult to achieve on small format cameras. For example, on micro four thirds, you would need something like a 17 millimeter lens with the maximum aperture of 0.6 to get the similar look. Sigma says this lens is compatible with in-camera lens aberration corrections. And because I'm using Lightroom, I can't really tell you how much a correction is happening in the background, but it's the end result that matters. And I can't see any traces of chromatic aberrations and very, very little traces of so-called bokeh fringing. So the images look really clean and the bokeh is uh, very, very smooth and soft and pleasing to look at. Naturally, there is some vignetting wide open, but it pretty much disappears by stopping down to about f2.8. I personally don't mind about some vignetting, and I often add it to my pictures to enhance the composition. I also can't see any distortions, so this would be a great lens also for architecture or something that requires zero distortions. The Sigma also handles backlight situations quite respectably for such a fast lens. Many fast or some fast lenses tend to be a bit sensitive to backlight because of the large front element. You can get some flare in your pictures, but nothing that would ruin your image completely. Here's one example shot at f8. And here's some video footage filmed on the Sigma 35mm f1.2 wide open and the Lumix S1R camera. I think this looks quite nice. Of course, this is just a small clip, but still I think this could also work very nicely for video. My conclusion with this Sigma is that optically this is absolutely top notch. This is also weather sealed and all in all the mechanical construction seems first class. It's hard to say if this is the best 35mm around currently, but it's certainly very nearly the best. And it's really hard to find many downsides on this lens. However, I think this is not your average Sunday walk around lens because it's so huge. You really need to want that f1.2 shallow depth of field wide angle look that this lens can deliver. And currently I don't know many other lenses that can deliver the same kind of uh, images. But as soon as you stop down this becomes another 35mm lens. Of course it's still super super sharp, but uh, you lose the special look the f1.2 look as soon as you stop down. And if you are not after that uh, special look that you get wide open, I don't think you want to carry this lens around. This lens goes for about 1500 euros or US dollars. And even though it's a lot more than the original 35 millimeter art lens that came out in 2012, it's still a good price for something like this. That's it this time, but before you go, you may want to check out my Sigma 40mm f1.4 art review and also the Lumix Pro 50mm f1.4 review. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you next time.